Procreate Dreams just came up with a new update, which is version 1.0.7. I'm pretty excited about this update because it brings a lot of functionality to the layers option, which I've been needing in my workflow. I want to quickly go over these updates and give you an idea of how these work. So here I'm going to make Procreate Dreams. I'm going to create a new file by clicking on the plus symbol here, and then I'm going to leave all this the same and click draw. So I'm in draw and paint mode, and I'm going to grab this and bring it down to go to flipbook mode, and then I'm going to drag that up here. And I want to draw something really quick so we can get an idea of how these layers work. Okay, so if I go to my layers here, you can see all of that is on one layer and I can turn that off here. If I click the end, I can change the blending mode and the opacity. Previously in Procreate Dreams, if I wanted to create a new layer, I would create it and see now it's on top and I couldn't drag it around. But now with this update, I can hold the bottom one, bring it up, and now it's on top. So if I want to use my bottom one for colors, so I can click on the top one, hit rename, change it to line and click done here and I click on this one change it to red click done now without selected I can color this in okay now I've got that on one layer I can click plus add another layer and see that was on top of the red one I want to click and hold that drag it down click rename and change that to blue click done so now I can color this one in sometimes I find it easier just to color with big strokes and then go up and clean up the outside I think it's a little quicker The next functionality added was being able to group layers. So if I click on the layers, you can see I now have three layers, line, red, and blue. If I want to group the colors together, you can see I already have blue selected. If I hold and swipe just a little bit, you can see I've selected both of these. Now I've got this group option here, so I can click group. And I can open or collapse those and click on here, click rename, type in colors, click done. So now I've got complete control of those. Now, I don't currently have the functionality to change the blending mode of the group yet, but I assume that's coming. But right now, we don't really have a lot of group options. Duplicate, delete, turn on and off. Then I can click and hold if I want to rename the group or ungroup it. So I'll click and undo that grouping. So now I've got my layers individual again. So I'll click on the layers and say I want to add shadow to the blue part. I can click plus, click on that, rename it to blue shadow. Click done. I want to select a darker blue. I'll make sure I'm on that layer and I want to draw a shadow in really quickly. I'm going to go back to the blue, select erase, and then erase this middle part out. Okay, I'm going to go back to my blue shadow, an erase tool, clean this up. Now, say I want to add some gradient to this shadow. One of the next functions it offers is the ability to use layer mask to control the visibility of drawing layer content. So one option with the layer mask is you control the amount that layer is showing based on the use of black and white and gray. I'm going to go to that layer and tap it and we hit mask. So now you see I have a mask added to that. And you see if I go to black, select this one, and my opacity is all the way up, if I paint black here, you can see that it looks like it's erasing it. And that's the whole benefit of the layer mask is while it looks like I'm erasing it, I'm actually not. I'm editing it with blacks and whites. So I can turn that mask off and you see when I turn that off, that color comes back. So you have ability to mask layers based on the use of black and white and it's non-destructive. So if I go back and choose white, you can see now I can paint that back in if I choose a gray, see now it's like partially transparent. 
So one benefit of this is say I wanted to be non-destructive with this, but I wanted to create a bit of gradient on this. So if I bring my opacity down, I can lightly paint in here and you see that's changing the color a bit. And if I do another one and then another one and then keep coming out as I go, now I can see I kind of get this shaded area. And I can do that again here. So I'm going to come in here. Now see how I get that blending look. But if I don't like that, I can turn my opacity back up and change this to white and now I get all that back again. So it's a great non-destructive way to work. In this update you also have the ability to organize brushes and brush sets by dragging and dropping them in the brush library. You can also import brushes right where you need them. So if I want to drag brushes from here I can bring this up and I can drag Procreate over and now I've got them both side by side. So I can go to like this drawing, I can click on brushes, so I could drag this whole brush library over to Procreate Dreams and now I have that in here. And one thing to keep in mind about that is if I edit these brushes in Procreate and then bring them over to Procreate Dreams, it'll retain those changes. So if that's something you like, now the opportunity to do that. So another change that has occurred is more of a life improvement type change is now onion skinning is on by default. So if I click here, you can see onion skinning is already on, so I can turn it off here. So by default, show onion skinning is now on, unless you turn it off. I usually end up turning mine on immediately, so that is a nice option. Another improvement they made is stability improvements for Gaussian blur on text. And if you've never used that before, and we'll come out of flipbook mode. I'm gonna hit plus, add text, and I'm just gonna type in Spider-Man. $20.99, grab this and bring this over, click done, click on it, drag it over here. So now with that text layer, I can click on this playhead, I can click filter, and now I have Gaussian blur options. So now I've got a keyframe here. If I reduce this and bring it all the way over here, bring that down, click on it, I can click filter, Gaussian Blur to add another keyframe, and now I can drag that to blur it. So if I scrub back, you can see the Gaussian Blur occurring. So the last improvement is for importing FLAC files, which FLAC stands for Free Lossless Audio Codecs. So it's an audio format that's the same quality as CD type files, but half the size. It's been around since 2001, and I haven't used it much, so I had to look up some of this information. It's an open source alternative to other formats, such as WAV files or WMAs. Now these are lossless formats. An MP3 file is a lossy format, which means it's compressed to reduce the file size, but the quality may suffer. So FLAC files are a good compromise between large lossless formats and small lossy formats. So the ability to use those files based on file format sizes and accessibility are handy. So I think that covers everything I wanted to talk about in this update. Hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.